Hello people, welcome. Today we will be working on this animated bottom app bar. This will be usable in any phone size or tablet or so on, so it is responsive as well. So let's get right into the video and see how to build it. I have made all things ready already, like these two parameters and assets that we will be using in this video. The assets are added to the pub spec YAML file as well. Let's start building the custom shape we see in the output using Custom Painter. We have to extend the Custom Painter class so that we can create curves like we see in the output and create two missing overrides like this. We are going to animate this, so should repaint must return true. Let me create the variable we need, but we will not use it now. Okay now let's create the paint variable, as the name suggests, this object will carry our color, painting styles and much more, I will use cascading operator to fill these two parameters. Now we will call the draw path method, which will help us in drawing the curves, that we desire in the canvas. Now let me explain how this curve is constructed. Now note these three pointers. First point is the starting point for the curve, or we can see it as the previous path's ending point. The second and third points are the coordinates you need to mention in the quadratic Bezier function to create the curve. 
the similar kind of technique is used to create all the other subsequent curves as well. Let me add these two variables into the coordinates so that you people can increase or decrease its size based on your needs. The x variable mentioned here will be used for the animation purpose. The start variable and the end variable is also added wherever it is required. Now let me create the x variable. This position variable will be used for the animation later on. Now let's start creating the icons to show at the top of this. Okay, the icons are added successfully. Now let me provide some color and show you how it is arranged. So that we can create a formula to position the drop accordingly. Our main goal now is to create a formula which will provide a starting point of the drop so that the drop can be placed at the center of the icons. So let's create it now. Now the total margin is 2 multiplied to the horizontal margin variable, which is pointing this, in this space here. In a similar way, total padding is pointing to this, in this space. Now we need to take the whole width, omitting the padding and margin values we got above, and dividing it with the number of icons. So that we can get the area occupied by the individual icons. Now we just need to multiply it with the index of the icons, 
As a result we will get the starting point of the area occupied by the icons. Let me demonstrate. As you can see the drop is outside of the area of the icons. That is because we didn't consider padding, so let me add the padding value to it. Now it looks as expected, the starting point of the drop is coinciding with the starting point of the icons area. But originally we want the center of the drop to coincide with the center of the icon. In order to achieve this, we will divide the icons area by 2 and add it to the formula. And don't forget to add half of drop's value, which is 70. Now it's better. Our next goal is to add the animation to the drop, so let's introduce animation controller and tween animation into the picture. First let me demonstrate how it is moving from the first icon to the last icon using Future Delayed as the trigger for the animation. I hope you noticed it. Let me trigger the animation once again. Please keep an eye on the output. Okay, now it's time to add the gesture detector into the widget tree to add on tap functionality to the icons and to trigger the animation on tap. Alright, animating the drop is done, only thing that is pending is, to make the icons animate to top and change its color when it is pressed, let's do that now.
Okay that is all people, please leave a like and comment, if you feel it is worthy, we'll meet you in the next video. Take care. See you.